Hey, what's up reefers? We are long overdue for an update on the 45 gallon tank and there's a lot of things to cover. So let's get right down to it. So first thing first, about five or six weeks ago, I was having some major diatom issue on the sand bed. But as you can see now, that is pretty much gone. And I just wanna really quickly recap how I combated it in case you are facing some of the similar issue. So basically the balance of uh, the LG was off in, in this tank. All the LG came into the display tank versus having them in the refugium. And the way I combated it was number one, I dialed back the light photo period. It was running about, I think like eight hours up here. And then in, in refugium, I was running about four hours because I was having some ugly hair LG issue in the refugium. I really want to knock them back. I didn't think it through. So I just turned down to four hours and I went on my trip. And for months it was running like that. So the LG in the display outcompeted the ones in the refugium. So first thing I did was to uh, reverse it. I dialed the light down up here to five hours and I dialed the light down in the refugium to, I believe, 10 or 12 hours. So this first thing I did. Second thing I did was that I kind of looked at my cleanup crew and I noticed that there's not much snails left. So I replenished my snails. I added a lot of these uh, serif snails. I think I added 12, right? And then I also added quite a few of these uh, Astria snails as well as the Trocus snails right here, uh, right here as well. So these really help stir the sand bed. Well, the serif helps stir the sand bed and the, uh, the astreas and the trochus really help with the algae on the glass. I also picked up a sand sifting sawfish that I'll see once in a while, just kind of like moving around before it barrels, buries into the sand again. Uh, so all these guys really help stir up the sand. But if I did not find the, uh, the cause of the excess nutrient that causes the, these algae bloom in the first place, um, I was still having that issue. I'm just putting a band-aid over it. So, uh, if you remember, I also added a little bit of macroalgae from Mari of Wamas, a uh, good friend Mari. She hooked it up. So let me show you my refugium. I'm gonna flex my iPhone X here. <laughs> uh, check this out. Oh, look at it, look at it. My alert says, shave nose hair. <laughs> I'm just glad you're not looking at me. All right, yeah, yeah, check this out. So if you look back to my, my old video when I introduced the macroalgae, it was pretty much just like a, a couple inches, a couple inches worth of these kind of grape algae, right? Just a couple strands. But look at it today. It's crazy, right? So I don't see much of my chain. Actually, I see the chain. Those are, they become really thin and wiry. So these macroalgae, these grape macroalgae definitely outcompeted the chados and definitely outcompeted the algae in my display tank. Just look at how lush these guys are. So I've always been a big fan of this type of macroalgae. If you look back at my uh, old 10 gallon tank at school, that's the exact type of macro that I have in there as well. But the danger of these macroalgae is that they grow fast, but they will also grow sexual. What it means is that they will actually turn white and release all those stuff into the water and turn the water white. And essentially it just kind of release all the excess, uh, release all the nutrient back into the water. So before that happens, you will have to keep pruning them back. And that's something that I will have to do tomorrow. Uh, so these, uh, I think like this is the major, one of the major factor of me uh, fighting back the diatom. So again, thank you Mari for hooking me up with the macroalgae. And since we're down here, when you look up here, you see the skimmers performing quite well as well. It's been pulling out a lot of gums. And I believe this is about a week and a half, two weeks worth. All right, so that is the update on fighting back the diatom. <clears throat> Second update that a lot of people ask about is how do I like the Aquatic Life T5 fixture? So at this point, I've had this fixture about three weeks and I am currently running a two Blue Plus bulb and two Atenic O3 bulbs. So this is Atenic O3 Blue Plus, Atenic O3 Blue Plus. So I was having all four uh, uh, Blue Plus before because that's kind of like the premier bulb to go for, for T5. Everybody's running those because it has good color and it grows coral. However, my issue with them is that they look too much like Windex. So the color of my tank was straight up Windex and it just looked too artificial for me. So I ended up swapping out one of the Blue Plus NS, putting in a Atenic O3. And 
it's not so much I like the Authentic O3, it's more that I like the fact that I have one less blue plus. Uh, and having it, having Authentic O3 is kind of like a bonus. Uh, so I like it so much that I swap out another blue plus for Authentic O3. <clears throat> Now, with the Authentic 3, people are saying that that will actually uh, pull out interesting color in Coral that uh, other balls may not be able to due to his wavelength. Uh, because some of his wavelength is actually uh, lower than what our human eyes can see, but uh, it will fundamentally change some Coral's color. So that remains to be seen. So in terms of like rendering Coral, I noticed that it has a little more pop, not that much. But I think long term, it's gonna bring a lot more benef benefits to the Corals as well versus just straight up blue plus but we'll see i mean i'll keep you guys updated so overall i really like the fixture big fan big fan of t5 not a big fan of t5 the fixture is pretty pretty straightforward clean right simple install two wires coming out i thought it's gonna bother me but it doesn't really bother me too much so i think it's all good so i'm really happy with this purchase so speaking of corals the next thing i want to tell you guys about are the new corals that I picked up and I'm super excited and slightly nervous because these are uh, I picked up a coral that's probably my most expensive to date and to really show you guys I need to turn off the flow so give me one second let's turn off the flow boom boom okay there you go I'm gonna turn this one off as well so before I feed my tank, I do this all the time. <clears throat> well, feed my coral, that is. All right, and the reason I have to turn off the flow is because I want to show you my frac rack. And you notice that the frac rack is no longer here. The tank looks so much cleaner. And I really need to give a shout out and thanks to Jim Telegram uh, for suggesting this because he helped me measure the PAR reading of the T5. And then while here, here I was like, well, I mean, now that you have full coverage over your tank, why don't you move the frac rack from here to the back? <laughs> I was like, damn, Jim, you're a genius. No wonder you fix out airplanes. My goodness. So he, he was absolutely right. Uh, right back here, there's just enough space for this frac rack. It tuck away really beautifully and then sit right under the T5s. <clears throat> But the reason I turn off the light and I want to show you is because, let me see if I can see this, right here. That is a baby jawbreaker. That's right, that's a baby OG jawbreaker. Uh, and, okay, so a quick backstory. Basically, a WAMAS member posted up saying that he got two baby jawbreakers to sell, and he's only selling for $100 each. Now, if you know Jawbreaker, you know that's a really good price. Yeah, but, I mean, it's still $100 for a mushroom. And I was like, man, I was on the fence for the longest time. And then uh, I was talking to my friend, Mari. And she was like, she was like, actually, she brought this up as well. So I saw this and then she brought it up in chat as well. She's like, hey, you see this? I'm like, yes, I'm on the fence. And uh, while I was kind of like uh, debating, one got sold, and she, she, she was like, yo, you know what? We both want this. She, they got, uh, she got one left. Why don't we go in 50-50? I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, yeah, you pay 50, I pay 50, and then uh, we'll keep the mushroom in the tank. When, when it pops out a baby, I, uh, I get the first baby. I was like, oh, are you sure? So I was still kind of on the fence, but finally I was like, all right, let's do it. So here it is. Uh, my... I guess you can say it's like my first uh, expensive high-end coral. And I'm really afraid that this is a slippery slope uh, because man, it does look really sweet. And I can understand why some people would charge this much or want to pay this much for this mushroom. So yeah, um, once again, thank you Mari for going in on this together. Uh, and <laughs> I can't believe there's so much faith I can keep this guy alive until it propagate. All right, well, th so that's that. And I think we're gonna name this little guy Monty. Like, uh, she, I think Mari said that it, it means chance in Spanish, right? It's a game. So, <sighs> cross your fingers for us. And speaking of high-end coral, check out this bounce mushroom. So this also came from another member of WAMAS. Uh, we got great people in WAMAS. And he posted this up. He was like, hey, I got this rug with two bounce mushrooms on there as well as a Monty cap. And I'm only gonna sell for 
And immediately I wrote him like, wait, are you sure $45 for a bounce mushroom? Hey, check out a little cleaner shrimp trying to swim. So he's like, yeah, you know, like he he thinks a mushroom is mushroom, you know, he, he got it for pretty cheap, so he doesn't want to jack up the price. So I, dude, I respect that. So I really respect that. So I'm going to carry on that tradition. Uh, when it comes time to propagate this guy, I'm not going to jack up the price. I'm going to keep it low. Um, so we'll see. And one cool thing is that before the entire mushroom is pretty much one color, that mint's green. But I'm starting to see a little lime green coming in as some of the tip. So maybe it's due to the Atinic 03, maybe it's due to the T5 in general, I don't know. But I'm really excited to see which way it goes. So sliding over here, another thing that I'm really um, excited about is the total, uh, sorry, Other Chaos, Other Chaos uh, Zoas. So before I had like a huge rock full of them, uh, I traded a Sun Coral Colony for it. But after I went on a trip, I came back in a week, they all melted away for whatever reason. I have no idea what happened. So this is kind of like my second attempt. And uh, David from Walmart, who sold the Jawbreaker as well, um, he really hooked it up. He's like, yeah, $20. I'm like, what? Back it up, please. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give Other Chaos one more time, one more try. And I feel like uh, the Zoas and Pallies has been doing pretty good in my tank so far uh, recently. So I'm um, cautiously optimistic. And right next to it, you see the Fruit Loop. I believe that's an Indonesia Fruit Loop that I picked up from the last WAMAS meeting. Uh, and it seems to be liking its new spot. And speaking of new spot, this rock, Bikini Rock, you notice I have a lot of algae growing on it now, and I do believe that it is leaching something because otherwise, you know, <laughs> the rest of the tank is pretty clean. It's just this one rock having a little mac um, uh, having some algae issue, which is fine because I got all these hungry snails getting ready to jump on and munch it down, so I'm not too worried. Um, I'm surprised that. Actually, that's a little green on there too. So those two are new Bikini Rock as well. So I'm kind of expecting them to start sprouting green uh, microalgae. And one thing I'm kind of happy about is the Xenia. I mean, it looks pretty sad right now uh, compared to a lot of you guys, uh, Xenia in your tank, but it's already looking a lot better than before. So I'm not sure what, but something is going a little bit more right for these guys. Another one big question I have is, uh, what exactly is this torch? When I was buying this, uh, I actually got this from Kingpin Korov, I think it's like 120 or something around that range. Um, he mentioned that, one of the guys mentioned that this is the um, Holy Grail. Well, he didn't say exactly it's Holy Grail. He, I think he mentioned that, oh, this is like the Holy Grail, so similar. So I'm not exactly sure what this is. And in his tank, or in the frag tank, it was like a bright gold. It's bright gold like this with tiny hints of green. But in my tank, it slowly morphed into like more green with a hint of gold. So I'm hoping that with the um, T5s, right, with the Tinico 3, maybe it'll start morphing the color again back to what I remember it. And speaking of color change, look at the Elegance Coral in the back. So before I slapped the T5 on, <clears throat> it's more like a white with green tip, right? But with the, under the T5, it's showing full green, which is kind of odd. Uh, but I will keep an eye out on them and see what other color is gonna morph into. <clears throat> and we cannot forget this tiny guy right here. Maybe I should swing over here and take a good look. So that is a Bally uh, Mini Maxi Carpet Anatomy. It's super, super sticky. It used to have a green center, but after coming to my tank for I think it's been like three weeks. It lost its green center, which is kind of odd, but it has really increased in size. It's starting to grow a little bit. I think it's finally adapted to the water parameter in my tank. Yeah, really interesting. And I still do not know what these redactors is called. Anyways, that is a, uh, <laughs> I, I want to say like a really quick look, but it's not actually a quick look. It's, Damn, every, every single update is getting longer and longer. Sorry, guys. I also want to give a shout out to these uh, Blue Green Chromis. These are straight up one of my favorite fish along with Mochi right now. Uh, these eight these eight little fish are just doing really, really good ever since um, 
August actually. The last one I lost was before my Philippine trip. So late July, early August, I lost one. And before that, I was like five or six months with no issue at all. So I really do believe that the one I lost was kind of like a freak accident. Um, a lot of people ask, how did I manage to keep the green chromas alive? Because they have such a reputation of picking on each other until they die. Just like now, see how they're chasing each other? Uh, so I really, I really, really honestly believe that the reason they're still alive is because of my hyper-aggressive female clown, especially in a more confined environment like this, a 45-gallon tank where they cannot just get their own corner. And once in a while, the female or the male clown is going to dart out and kind of break up the group, right? And I think that kind of keep the green chromas on their toes. So they don't have as much time chasing each other, kind of picking on the weakest one, because like uh, once in a while the clown will come in and break it up. So, uh, and couple that with pretty constant feeding, because I feed my fish a lot. Um, because I love watching them eat. Here. I mean, how do you walk away from these guys? I could just like keep feeding them nonstop. Yeah, so um, so we have a we have more aggressive fish kind of breaking up the group, and then we got like constant feeding at least like three times a day. So I think those two factor really help keep these uh, keep these guys alive. Uh, so it'll be interesting in the future once I get a larger tank, once I have more room, or once the clowns stop dive bombing them because they have their little corner, they have the the other area. Would these eight still be alive like this? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Alright guys, just want to give you guys a really quick update on the 45 gallon tank. Um, I've been receiving some messages on Instagram in terms of like going over what equipment I use on the 45 gallon tank, especially there's a lot of interest in the sump, but I think I'll need to do that on a separate video, especially since this is going, uh, this is already like almost 17 minutes, it's ridiculously long. Uh, so I'll do that in a separate video. And since we're mentioning Instagram, if you are not following me, if you are not following me on Instagram yet, be sure to follow me because I've been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram, a lot of brand new content, a lot of content that I'm not bringing onto YouTube because like Instagram is such a different medium. I feel like the whole vibe is more, it's more personal and it's a little bit more fun. It's a little bit more uh, just like at the moment as well. So I have really different content on there. Please check it out at Inappropriate Reefer and say hi to me. Uh, and low key, I'm not sure if I should say it, but I do have a Facebook page as well um, called Inappropriate Reefer. But I have not been doing too much to it. It's more like a placeholder. But I do post once in a while to my Facebook page, but I have not really started growing it. So it's only like, I think it's like 10, we got like, I got 10 friends on there or something, or 10 followers on that page or something. So if you want to be one of the first guys, make sure to follow me on Facebook as well at Inappropriate Reefer. Man, I'm hopping on all the social media stuff. But no, I'm not on Snapchat yet, maybe one day. But for now, I think uh, YouTube, Instagram is good. Facebook, kind of placeholder. Maybe I'll do a little, more, a little bit more of it down the road. All right, guys. If you're still with me here, you are indeed one of the hardcore reef squad. I apologize again. Every single time I talk, I just kind of keep going. Uh, there's actually a lot more I want to talk about that I did not get to cover in this video. So I'll follow up with a video later on. Um, oh man. Check out the elegance coral. Sorry, sometimes uh, you just kind of get lost staring at all the stuff in the tank. Let me show you the frag rack one more time before we go. <sighs> all right, guys. All right, guys. That's it. That's it. All right. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you next Sunday at 9:30 a.m. sharp. See you guys. I was walking with the Reef Escape, check these out. These are the tiniest mandarin I've ever seen. Apparently it's going into the Smithsonian 